And I also kind of want to say a word that I kind of don't really like saying it because it's gotten a lot of, you know, bad rep and a lot of people hear it and they're, they cringe. But I, I want, I feel so confident in saying this, doTERRA is not a pyramid scheme. So when you guys um, are really looking into the business, realize that a pyramid scheme, it's illegal. Basically what a pyramid scheme is, is when you're basically selling an idea without a product. So it's illegal. It was made illegal in the 60s. Um, doTERRA wouldn't be as successful as it is right now if they were wanting to do a scheme. So when you look at it, anything like that, like would not be allowed, first of all. And if you're comparing it to like a pyramid scheme, it really isn't because you just said, we all work together. We're not competing against each other like we are in a corporate America, or if you want to look at it as in the military, everybody's wanting to rank up, right? Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Laura and I help spread awareness around MLMs, scams, and cult-like practices. If that stuff interests you, definitely be sure to subscribe down below. Today we will be watching a doTERRA opportunity call. They will debunk our misconceptions about their MLM and how it's different from all of the other MLMs. Let's see what these doTERRA reps have to say. Hi everyone. Hi. Thanks for being here with us again today. It is our part three of our series and we have all been talking about doTERRA and a little different things. Today we kind of want to dive in to the type of business doTERRA is, which is an MLM. And a lot of people have questions on what it entails. So really quickly, we'll go ahead and introduce ourselves and then we can start talking about the MLM business and why doTERRA is different. And I would love to hear what, what is an MLM anyway? Oh, multi-level marketing, right? So also known mm -hmm. as direct sales or network marketing. Um, it's really a company that just operates by selling products using a person to person. So that connection, which I think when you have, when you, when you say that's like a doTERRA thing, right? Coming from doTERRA, I think that just adds this personal loving touch, which just goes back to the mission that we talked about last time, right? What really, again, what makes doTERRA different. And I think it's interesting that, you know, doTERRA would really values us as wellness advocates, right? To spread the word about essential oils and their mission. And so they really invest their money versus not on marketing, like billboards and magazines, right? They invest it back in us and education with us and tools for us um, to spread that word. So, okay. I just want to stop here and you'll see me looking at my notes cause I just didn't want to miss anything. So um, for one thing, I love that they admit to it being an MLM and they break it down. They explain that it's multi-level marketing, direct sales network, marketing, all these different names that it goes by. So I do appreciate that. They want to talk about why it's different from the other MLMs. So we'll see more of, of what they have to say about that. They're talking about selling products from using person-to-person -person connection and they describe it as a personal loving touch. This really depends on what exactly you're doing. Are you sending messages out to people or are you just letting them come to you about a product that you're using? Say you're using a product and you love it and then somebody asks you about it, they're like, oh, this this is interesting, where'd you get it? That would be something more of just letting it come naturally. But what these MLMs do is they cold text friends and they basically start up a conversation pretending to be interested in their lives and trying to connect with them 
with the main agenda being to sell product. And that's where this ends up becoming more of a pushy kind of maneuver. And they're dressing it up to say personal loving touch. As we get further into this video, you, you're gonna see more about that. I also thought it was interesting that they're saying that they're advocates to spread the word about essential oils and their mission. And I'm just curious what kind of mission they're talking about with essential oils. This whole thing kind of seems contradictory to each other. Like they're trying to get their mission out and spread the word and get as many people to experience their product. And you'll hear them saying the word sharing a lot. When I was in MLMs that I was in, they, they would often say, we're not selling, we're sharing, because it's a, it's a bit of a wrapper to justify uh, what you're doing. You are selling, you're just trying to make it sound like you're selling with good intentions. And although you may start out with good intentions, your intention is to make money because that is what you're trying to do. And that, I mean, that's how businesses work. However, this business takes it too far because you really can't make money unless you are recruiting. And we'll find out more about that later. So I just wanted to touch on some of those points. They mentioned not spending their money on billboards and instead they're investing it back into the doTERRA reps and the education. And I'm wondering what kind of education they're referring to because there's naturopathic medicine, safety regarding essential oil. There's a lot of types of education about essential oils and health properties and aromatherapy and things that you need to know about these types of things that people might consume in ways that are not beneficial to their bodies or to their health. And if anybody makes any kind of medical claims that these essential oils can do with doTERRA, then you need to make sure that you're reporting that to the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, because that is something that is a promise that they are not certified to make because it could be misleading and it could be dangerous if they claim that this works for health reasons that it doesn't. If you always listen to your doctors and people that are certified and know what they're talking about in health relations. Let's continue. I think that's really different. No, so doTERRA has a little bit different structure than other MLMs. I will talk about a little bit later, but not only are we the number one essential oil company in the world, I just think it's natural that if you love something, you share it, right? And it's like, we all kind of do MLM stuff with things that we love, right? Like, oh, I just had this awesome restaurant, you know, in Portland, like, have you checked it out? You should really go check it out, right? Or, oh my gosh, I this, this new baby product is so great, right? Or anything like that. Like, if you love something, like, you just can't help but, like, share it and spread the word with people around you. And I think really in essence, that's kind of what an MLM is, especially with doTERRA too. Okay, here we go again with the sharing. They mention it again. In this part, they're talking about how there's a different structure to doTERRA than other MLMs. For one thing, I really don't like that they said that they're the number one essential oil company in the world. That is a huge claim. And it's also one that can't necessarily be factually determined because number one based on what? Number one in what? Number one in healing properties, number one. It's very vague of a statement. And usually when people say that they're the number one company, it's a marketing ploy and it's not something substantiated. It's not one of those things that is a tangible, like factual statement. It, it's too vague. So saying you're number one at something, it's like according to whom? Number one according to whom? A blog post? A, like number one according to doTERRA? So I just want to bring this to light because this is something that if you're going to be using business opportunity call to recruit people, to, to get people interested in your company, you would want to make factual statements about your company that can be 
determined. Something that is a little bit less vague and more of a specific, has a little bit more of a factual base and can be shown. I'm trying to be fair and listen to them, but also showing that these types of statements, bold statements that, that the companies sometimes make can be very misleading to somebody that is not doing the research and that is just taking them at their word, which is how I ended up falling for some of these things. They say, if you love something, you share it. And I, I used to say the same thing. While it sounds like it's a positive intention, at the end of the day, it is the only way that you're able to make money and the end goal is always to be able to recruit. So even if you thought that you would only use the products for yourself, you would only start your business just for yourself and for the discount, what ends up happening once you get into that, you start listening to your MLM upline. They start influencing you on, well, you love it so much, why don't you share what you love um, with other people around you? Why don't you start posting about it? Why don't you just start getting in into it? And then you're like, well, okay, yeah, I like it, so I'm going to share it. And then you start messaging people about it. Then you start having those, hey girl, messages. Hey, hun, how are you? How, like, how have you been? Hey, I just started this business, blah, 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 blah. And then you start trying to sell and recruit. So it becomes this thing where your intentions may have started out as just getting the product for yourself, but then you end up falling into that trap of that, that, that cycle. They, they talk to you about these things and you start listening to what they say, what your upline says about uh, recruiting people and about sharing the products, not selling them, but sharing them. So they make it sound like you are doing good and helping people. And it's this type of language and like positivity that they throw in. That's how people start getting brainwashed. It's, it's a kind of a slow progression where they just they start love bombing you at first. They support you. They they give you the confidence that you are doing right, and that and then you just start believing what they say because they start influencing you with these specific types of manipulation that make you feel like you're a part of something and that you can share these products and not be a salesy person. And before you realize you're a salesy person and you didn't even know it. We all do MLM stuff with people we love. Uh, they are comparing it to baby products or recommendations for restaurants. And so I wanna point this out that most people in MLMs haven't tried the product at first. Then they must buy the product so that they can say that they've tried it. And comparing this to baby products and recommendations at restaurants. If you go to a restaurant and you're like, I really like that. And then you tell a friend about it. Hey, you should totally check out this restaurant. Oh, but while you check it out this restaurant, you should pay me a tip for recommending the restaurant to you because I want to make money off of it. That's not how it works. And the same with baby products. If you're a mother and you, you find products that work for you and you share it with some other moms that you know, and then you're like, hey, since I recommended this to you, I should get a cut, right? No, that's not how it works. It's not, friendships shouldn't be conditional. And what the problem is, is that we don't do MLM stuff all the time with people we love because that would make our relationships conditional. That would make our friendships dollar signs. And so we recommend things to people because we love the products that we use and we recommend it to them, but we're not in a conditional relationship. We're there to help people. So when they mention that that is something that we do naturally anyway, outside of MLMs, I disagree. And I feel like it's important to debunk this because conditional, it makes it a conditional relationship. And 
that's kind of their spin on it. And so I'm debunking that. Let us continue. So, but what really makes our company a little bit different is, um, well, a few things and I'll let you talk about that. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I have really sat with about what we do is when you you were saying, you know, like some companies will use all, you know, like billboards and print ads and things like that. I just want to point out that doTERRA was really deliberate about doing a direct sales model because it's such a complicated subject. Um, essential oils, there is so much to know about them. I mean, they're really easy to use, but it turns out like to have all the information to be really the most beneficial, you need this ongoing source of education. So this direct sales model is really the thing that makes the most sense for this particular product, right? Um, and then, so the interesting thing is that doTERRA actually has a model that is flipped from most multi-level marketing companies. So, um, Basically, in most companies, the further down you are in an organization, the less money you make. But doTERRA very deliberately um, made it so that the further down someone is in your organization, the more money you make, which actually really fosters this, this uh, cooperation rather than competition. It is very beneficial for all of us to be working together as we grow our own businesses, we grow doTERRA. And then as doTERRA grows, we all benefit from that. Okay. I want to stop here and go over a few more things. I wonder what makes them qualified to know about essential oils. Something that can be toxic to people, people with allergies, people with certain conditions, or just depending on the method of dispersal of essential oils. It, they should have some sort of course or certification with these essential oils because it can be dangerous if distributed in the wrong way or not diluted in certain ways. There are definitely things there that need to be addressed. I've looked at how these MLMs recruit you. Basically what you need is to be alive and to have money. Also, they say it's really easy to use. And this just feels like a contradiction because they say it's really easy to use, but they also say there's so much to know about the essential oils. So if it's so easy to use, but then it's also so complicated, it, it seems like they're just contradicting themselves a lot. And they don't really know what they're talking about with essential oils. If you're interested in essential oils. There's a lot of places that are sell, sell essential oils, but I, I highly recommend doing research about any types of ways to use essential oils and make sure that you're doing it properly. I just feel like they're not doing their research. I haven't heard them once mention about taking a certification course or anything to qualify them to be able to speak about these recommendations. These companies tend to have bonuses. Bonuses get you into sales and recruiting mode really fast. So a lot of times what they mean usually by the further down, this is what I'm suspecting, further down like where you're just starting, they're saying the more you can make. Well, I feel like that's probably what they're describing here is that you can get bonuses from moving up fast and recruiting and selling as much as you can in the beginning. And so that might be what they're talking about in this scheme of business. So don't have it fooled by saying that it's flipped from most MLM companies. So it's like it's trying not to be a pyramid. Let's get into that and we'll look at that. This talks a little bit about their personal volume, which is their point value system in rewards for being a wellness advocate and purchasing through loyalty and being able to earn free product. Okay, so this first one is the fast start bonus. And you see just an overview. It's paid weekly 
Um, bonuses are made to wellness advocates, and then you have the first, second, and third level enrollers. The first level enroller receives 20%, second level 10%, third level 5%. So it's basically saying that you get bonuses for enrolling. Each enroller must have a loyalty rewards program template set to at least 100 PV or personal volume for the month and complete a qualified loyalty rewards program order. And then unearned bonuses do not roll up to any other enroller. So this is just another thing. So you get a fast start bonus. This is in your first 60 days, you get a fast start bonus. And so any commissionable orders, you get fast start bonus for getting people enrolled in the loyalty rewards and getting people to spend 100 PV and getting people under you as a recruit. So that goes directly into their focus being on recruiting and getting you bonuses for starting out. Again, that is something to point out that this is why they said that they that you make more money when you start because it's all about the bonuses and it really makes it competitive and salesy. Okay, their power of three bonus um, paid weekly. This definitely looks like it's it's for recruiting because you get the the three people you have the hundred personal volume that is required, three people at level one, and then more people at um, level two, and then level three, and then so it's a monthly bonus paid to sponsors that can be $50, 250 or 1500 Any sponsor with a qualified loyalty rewards program order is eligible to earn the bonus. So, the $50 power of three bonus. In order to qualify for the $50 bonus, a wellness advocate must make a qualified uh, loyalty rewards program order. The wellness advocate must have also have three personally sponsored wellness advocates or wholesale customers with qualified loyalty rewards program orders and a minimum team volume of $600 or 600. So that means that not only do you have to have either three recruited wellness advocates or three recruited customers, um, which is also a form of recruiting as well because it builds on the loyalty rewards. But you also have to have a team volume of 600, meaning people have to buy that much stuff. And the same goes for the other ones, so I'm not going to get into all of it, but you can see how it's structured with bonuses to recruit. And then you got the unilevel bonus, which is a bonus where like if you at least have a monthly personal volume of 50 as consultant or like also monthly qualifying volume um you get more bonuses so really they stress that you have to be buying product as well as recruiting so not only are you buying product for yourself and recruiting but you're, you're having to do all these things in order to really make money because the bonuses and the recruiting and, and all of that potential money that you can make is very heavily reliant on recruiting. And that is why this is essentially a pyramid scheme, even if you have products. So it's very important to be going through this research. And I'm not going to go into all this, but I will link it. So this is from their website. So you can do your research, but be sure to do the research and be sure to check out the other anti-MLM videos. I will have the names of some people that are other anti-MLM YouTubers that you can check out and see if they can help you figure some stuff out as well. And if you like what you see here, you can comment down below. They said it fosters this cooperation rather than competition. So a lot of times in these companies, there is this sense of cooperation, this sense of community. And, the, and it, it kind of plays into this cult-like mentality where you are in, so invested in the company and you're invested in this community and it's like your family it becomes your new family and everything outside of it is cut off like it, it takes precedence over everything else and the whole rather than competition well yeah 
because your upline does make money from you. Like, I mean, that's just how these things work. So of course you want the other people to succeed. And even if they're not in your upline, you want the business to succeed because you want, you know, you want it to look good because that it becomes your way of life. They say working together as one to grow our own business. So I need to point this out. It's not your business. So it's doTERRA and you are not the CEO. You're not the top of the company. You are an independent contractor. You rely solely on sales, recruits, and bonuses. You do not make a steady wage at all. You are relying solely on your commissions. So when they say growing their own businesses, a lot of times they'll think they're their own boss babes, their own entrepreneurs, CEOs. They feel like it's their own business, but they're not the ones making the products. It's not one of those things where you're starting it up from start to finish and you're doing all the work. Your essential work is trying to get people to buy your product and recruit them. They said, as doTERRA grows, we all benefit from that. And this implies the importance of recruiting because they're essentially saying we need to grow, so you need to recruit. And as MLMs grow, it gets more saturated. You run out of people. So you can only succeed when there are people under you because then it's too saturated it, otherwise and, and you can't get any more people. So let us continue. So um, there are also, there's like so many different ways that you can make money with doTERRA as well. It's not just strictly commission. You have, you can make money off of the product that you actually sell, but then you can also make money in um, uh, what's called the power of three so that this is like just basically a reward for really structuring your organization in a way that makes sense and is strong and stable. Um, you can also access bonus pools, which like I said, that's where you're getting paid not just on your own organization, but on doTERRA as a whole. So um, really it's that, that idea of like, the all ships rise on the tide right like we're all rising yeah I think like sorry to like interrupt but I think that's what's so mm. cool because frankly like we're all not even on the same team right but like mm -hmm. it's so fun to collaborate and work together and knowing you know whatever I bring to the table can help you guys and vice versa and you know how how well I do in my business actually helps you and you're not even on like my direct team and I just think that's mm -hmm. so um, I just think that's really powerful and really awesome. So mm -hmm. anyway, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I totally agree. I feel like it's a very supportive, um, company as well. I was so amazed of how supportive everybody is. And like how you said, like, we're not even part of the same team and we can all work together and help each other out. And with that being said too, um, I don't know. Did you need to say anything else about uh, the structure of the MLM? No, I don't think we need to really get into the the nitty gritty of it, okay. um, unless someone. I just didn't want to like cut you off. <laughs> so they say there are many ways to make money, and they say that it's the products. So selling the products. I'm sorry, sharing the products. There's the power of three. Is bonuses it sounds a little bit like recruiting power of three will set us free the power of three will set us free the reward for structuring your organization now structuring your organization means recruiting people under you and structuring your team like getting your team as you can see the ways that they're saying to make money is by selling and recruiting so keep that in mind. You're getting bonuses by recruiting and rank. Those are the ways you make money. They're talking about a supportive team. So 
Is it supportive when someone leaves? That is the question I would wonder if they like say, you know, even if you find this isn't for you and you leave, we are still very supportive and we will help you transition to wherever you need to go if this isn't a good fit for you. No, the thing is that a lot of these MLMs will say how supportive it is, how much of a family it is. And when people do decide to leave, they are sometimes cut off or shunned or have a fallout with friends. They just have too many differences. It can put a strain on friendships, relationships, but also a lot of times you get so invested in the supportiveness of your MLM that everything else is on the back burner. So, you know, your family, your friends, any job you have or anything, they give you this mindset that corporate is bad, college is bad, things outside of them are bad and that they're always there for you. You will always find support with them and if somebody doesn't like your MLM or calls it a name you don't like, that they're just haters. And so I really want to point out that when they say supportive team, it's that cult-like mentality of this, well, this toxic positivity that they spread. Sorry, I dropped my remote. So toxic positivity where everything has to be positive and it has to be the team, the team is really supportive and you get this personal growth and all this stuff, but everything outside of that is negative. And so they, they just, they foster this so that you're basically turning away from other sources for support. So supportive team, they're focusing on the support of their team, but not other avenues of support. It's kind of like a trigger warning. It is kind of like a toxic relationship where you are cut off from the world and you can't go hang out with other friends because of jealousy. And that is what it just kind of ends up being in these companies. <laughs> but I, I just like spark this mm -hmm. passion that I have, you know, mm -hmm. especially with me personally, especially during these times right now, a lot of people are losing their jobs. Um, they want a job opportunity where they can have flexible hours, uh, work from home. And in my personal experiences, I was working for a corporate um, and you know we closed down. So what do I do? You know, I focused on this business because I was doing both. But, you know, they've been able to have that opportunity for me to stay working and keep sharing, you know, what we love. Like Mandy said, like, I love these. They work great for me. And not just the essential oils, all the product that doTERRA does. I love sharing it. So it's a great opportunity for people to look into the business. Um, it's basically kind of like a self-employment. So you do your own schedule. And then you have the support of everybody else. So anything that you need, someone will be there to help you out. So I think that is really amazing. And I also kind of want to say a word that I kind of don't really like saying it because it, it's gotten a lot of, you know, bad rep and a lot of people hear it and they're, they cringe. But I, I want, I feel so confident in saying this, doTERRA is not a pyramid scheme. So when you guys um, are really looking into the business, realize that a pyramid scheme, it's illegal. Basically what a pyramid scheme is, is when you're basically selling an idea without a product. So it's illegal. It was made illegal in the 60s. Um, doTERRA wouldn't be as successful as it is right now if they were wanting to do a scheme. So when you look at it, Anything like that, like, would not be allowed, first of all. And if you're comparing it to, like, a pyramid scheme, it really isn't because you just said, we all work together. We're not competing against each other like we are in a corporate America. Or if you want to look at it as in the military, everybody's wanting to rank up, right? Everybody wants to become sergeant. Everybody wants to become captain. 
So we'll, we're all competing to go up higher or in corporate America, you know, you're all competing to be a manager, a market manager, a CEO, where in doTERRA, we're not like that. So we all work together to help each other out. This, this recording was done in October of 2020. So just a couple months ago, and they're mentioning about the pandemic times and people losing jobs and then wanting a job opportunity. Now, I think MLMs have really started targeting people during this pandemic because people are losing their jobs and they want to market this in such a way that that the MLM is going to get you your money back, get you your life back. You can spend more time with the kids and at home and on your own terms. And so they're really marketing it that way. But the truth is that these MLMs are not stable. They're not a stable source of income. You are not making a livable, like, you're not making a steady wage you're dependent upon what you sell and how many recruits you have that are also selling so you're more likely to lose money buying your own products from the mlm so that you can be what they call a product of the product and you're essentially replacing your products with theirs so that you can advertise it and share those products. They'll say stuff like you're not having inventory, there's no inventory required, but the thing is they don't have to require inventory because they know that you're going to end up buying those products because that's the only real way you can convince other people to buy it. Because if you just go around asking people to buy products that you've never tried, that you can't vouch for, then you're not going to have very good selling points. So if so, a lot of times you pretty much have to be like the say it time and again that you need to be a walking billboard with these products. I have heard this many times and it, it's true. You're going to end up spending your mo money on your stuff. And if you can't get other people to buy it, then you've spent the money and you're, you're the best customer. Like the distributors are the best customers and they know this. So MLMs, they really prey on this pandemic as a solution for people, as a solution to get you out of debt when it's more likely to get you into more debt. And I really, the toxic, scammy nature of these MLMs, and this is what had me fall into it as well. I was targeted through these things. And I really, it is so sketchy that I really, seek to expose these in in the most informative way as possible for you people on youtube because i i don't want someone else to fall into these pitfalls and so i'm just trying to be just very honest with you guys i don't want to come down hard on people that are in mlms or that are in like in these things because i know firsthand what these companies have been saying with with the people that they're recruiting and the, the things that go on behind the curtains. And these things are what I have experienced, what I've seen other people experience, you know, just how these things are structured to fail and how it's very likely that you're going to lose money and it's not right. And I really wanna save people from that. So I went off on a little bit of a tangent. Ooh, okay. Flexible hours, working from home, you hear it that a lot. Uh, the problem is it cuts into all of your free time. You have to have the MLM as your priority over everything else. Usually you have to use your situations as marketing. So if you are having chronic pain, if you are having some sort of situation, that they can use that they're like, Oh, use that story so that you can connect to those people and relate so that you can share the product. So you're always working the business. You're always thinking about the MLM before all else. So you pretty much have to use 
any breaks that you have to work the business and you know they'll say don't hang out with your friends don't don't watch netflix or any downtime that you might want to just spend to get kind of decompress you have to use that towards your business in order to succeed or you're not working hard enough and then you have to do personal growth, personal development. So corporate closed down and she turned to doTERRA and that she loves sharing the products. Um, and this is why many um, end up turning to an MLM because th there's a hardship, a vulnerability of a solution that they, they provide. It's like, oh, you lost your corporate job. Well, this, this is something that you can do and you can pick it up and you can make money and work from home and etc. So these are the people that they target. Now, okay, I have to talk about this. They, I kind of knew where they were going as soon as they started this th thinking process, but saying that they are not a pyramid scheme. I have heard this time and again, when I was in, when I was in Arbonne, I actually asked if we were a pyramid scheme or why people think we're a pyramid scheme or how we're not a pyramid scheme. And they told me that it's because we sell products. So I am going to show you in a minute, a source actually from the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, which is government issued. It's, it, it's a very legitimate article about MLMs and pyramid schemes and how an MLM might be a pyramid scheme and what that entails. Okay, they're saying that they're debunking this, that it's not a pyramid scheme. So I'm gonna debunk their debunk and show you that a pyramid scheme can have products, a pyramid scheme with products. And this is why, because they focus on the recruiting and because it's not just about the products, it's about the whole system as a whole so that they're not educating themselves enough on this topic. It's not about whether or not you have products. That is not what a pyramid scheme is about. A pyramid scheme is about pe most people losing money and it being a system of recruiting. And so I'm going to just break down a little bit in this article just to show you. Of course, you're welcome to do as much research as you find on the topic for information gathering because I would never recommend someone just take one source as final. Uh, that's how we end up in pyramid schemes is by going by one person telling us in the upline that it is that it is not and we believe them. So I want you to do your own thorough research as well but I want to provide you with what I've found and what, and just from my experience as well as from the articles. Another thing they said is it's illegal. Yes, pyramid schemes are illegal. And they're thinking that because they're not shut down that they must not be illegal. The problem is a lot of these companies are illegal. They just don't have the means to be shut down quite yet because there have to be enough lawsuits against them in order for them to take action against these companies. There has to be enough lawsuits and they're working on it because there have been several lawsuits with, with these MLM companies and they've had to shut down or they've had to change their business and marketing tactics. They're required to, by law, put up their compensation plan and make no claims to income. So if you see income claims, report it to the FTC because they're not allowed to claim income or claim that their products can do any kind of miraculous feats or health things. And it talks about our multi-level marketing businesses and pyramid schemes and how they're connected. So if you're considering a business opportunity that involves selling products to family and friends and recruiting other people to do the same, that is a multi-level marketing or network marketing. Some of them are illegal pyramid schemes.
Now, most people who join legitimate MLMs make little or no money. Some of them lose money. And then people who become involved in an illegal pyramid scheme may not even realize that they've joined a fraudulent venture and typically lose everything they invest. Some also end up deeply in debt. And here's what you need to know about these MLMs and pyramid schemes and what you should know before joining an MLM. So MLMs have distributors that make money in two different ways. And it says by selling the MLM's products to retail customers who are not involved in the MLM and by recruiting new distributors and earning commissions based on what they buy and their sales to retail customers. So again, it goes back to selling and recruiting. Those are the two main agendas on here. And then your, your recruits, the people they recruit and so on, they become your sales network. They become your downline. And if the MLM is not a pyramid scheme, it will pay you based on your sales to retail customers without you having to recruit new distributors. So if they don't have a focus on the recruiting, if it's just about the selling and recruiting is not necessary, then it is not a pyramid scheme. However, what makes it a pyramid scheme is when the reliance is on the recruiting, even if you have products. Even if you have products, it can still be an illegal pyramid scheme when people are doomed to fail, make little or no money, lose money. So what is a pyramid scheme and how can you spot one? So pyramid schemes are scams. They can look remarkably like legitimate MLM business opportunities, but if you become a distributor for a pyramid scheme, it can cost you and your recruits, often your family and friends, substantial time and money. The promoters of a pyramid scheme may try to recruit you with pitches about what you'll earn. They may say you can change your life, quit your job, even get rich by selling the company's products. That is a lie. Your income would be based mostly on how many people you recruit, not how much product you sell. Pyramid schemes are set up to encourage recruitment to keep a constant stream of new distributors and their money flowing into their business. Often in a pyramid scheme, you'll be encouraged or even required to buy a certain amount of products at regular intervals, even if you already have more inventory than you can use or sell. So you'll, you'll be required to buy a certain amount of product at regular intervals in order to keep your rank in the business and or, you know, monthly things to stay active. Um, you may even have to buy products before you're eligible to be paid to, or to get certain bonuses. So if you are required to purchase in order to get paid your commission, that is a pyramid scheme. And this doTERRA call is talking about how you must have a 100 um, point value order in order to get paid your commission. You may also have to pay repeated fees for other items like training sessions or expensive marketing materials. So a lot of times these companies have um, retreats and training, extra training and, and marketing materials and different things. Um, in addition, the company may say you can earn lavish rewards like prizes, bonuses, exotic vacations, and luxury cars. These are things that they do. So you have bonuses um, a lot of times and, and incentives in order to sell and recruit. However, it often turns out that you have to meet certain product purchase, recruitment training, or other goals to qualify for the rewards and only a handful of distributors ever qualify. Um, eventually, most distributors find that no matter how hard they work, they can't sell enough inventory or recruit enough people to make money. They also can't keep up with the required fees or the inventory purchases they need to make to qualify for rewards, and they can't earn enough money to cover their expenses. In the end, most people run out of money, have to quit, and lose everything they invested. And here are some warning signs or red flags of a pyramid scheme. Promoters make extravagant promises about your earning potential. Stop, such promises are false. Promoters emphasize recruiting new distributors for your sales network as the real way to make money. You just need to walk away in a legitimate MLM program. You should be able to make money just by selling the product. 
no recruiting, no getting anybody involved. Promoters play on your emotions or use high pressure sales tactics. Maybe saying you'll lose the opportunity if you don't act now and encourage you from or discouraging you from taking time to study the company. That is a red flag if they discourage you from taking time to consider it and discussing it. Uh, distributors buy more products than they want to use or can resell just to stay active in the company or to qualify for bonuses or other rewards. So this this happens where you know you need to buy products for yourself in order to qualify for bonuses and stay active in the company. You have to um, sell a certain amount every month or you have to stay involved in order to be active or keep your rank. That is a sign. So, and the rest of this stuff kind of goes into an MLM and this is already so long, so I'm probably not going to cover it except for maybe another time, but you know, you have to be a salesperson, you have to have a solid sales plan and have income goals. Um, can you afford to risk the money and time involved in these? And you always want to do your homework, research the company. I'll link this link below so you can read more in detail about MLMs and pyramid schemes and, and what the FTC says about such things and about how it can still have products and still be a pyramid scheme. It does not excuse it from being a pyramid scheme if they have products. The main the main criteria for being a pyramid scheme is that it focuses a lot on recruiting. Even if there's a product, it focuses a lot on the recruiting uh, of the business structure, the business model in order to succeed. And that is why in, in this video, I have stressed that you require selling and recruiting. Those are the two big things that they focus on in all the things that they're saying. So I want that to be clear. This is, that is what we are talking about. Another thing that really, this, this really upsets me because they're talking about military ranking and comparing, they're comparing MLMs to military ranking and also comparing it to corporate America. I've heard the corporate America a lot, you know, because the structure, you've got the CEO, you've got the marketing managers, and you've got the people below and, you know, all that. So I've heard that type of spiel. The thing is that people in corporate America are making a steady wage. They are getting health benefits. They are getting various benefits working with a, with a company. They're not an independent contractor. They are putting in the work, but they're also getting something in return out of it. They're not having to recruit their friends. It's not one of those things where you ever have to recruit other people in your business, like in, in the corporate America. It's, it's not about that. And when they're saying military ranking, this is, this is where I have a problem because the military, they're not selling to rank up when they recruit people in the military. In fact, when people are recruited to the military, yeah, there's those recruitment offices, but they have to take a test uh, written. Um, they have to do basic training. They have to like do physicals. They have to be, I'm not, I'm not a military expert, but um, just from, you know, what I know about them, it's not something that they have to recruit people to do. It's not something that they have to sell to people. It's not, it is a very, it's a very respectful position. And it's something that, you know, people would be proud of with the, with the ranking and stuff. And for them to just compare to something that is completely, completely different. I don't know, what do you guys think about this? It's, it's just, to even do that, the audacity to even compare to ranking to military and like ranking up and that being 
the same as ranking up in an MLM, which the only way you can rank up in an MLM is to sell a lot of product to people and recruit people into your business. And that just doesn't seem like anywhere near the same thing it requires to rank up in military where you have worked really hard and um i mean not to say that people don't work really hard to recruit but that you're in a respectable position and you're not required to recruit other people and say hey you want to join the army with me you know no just no just no Ooh, got a little worked up there. Okay. Hi, this is Editing Laura here. I realized after making this that it became incredibly long because I tend to ramble on about things I'm really passionate about. So I apologize for that, but a lot of these things really needed to be said because they're so important. So I decided to make this a part one and part two deep dive into the doTERRA opportunity call and so we're going to go into more about doTERRA and the rest of the opportunity call so stay tuned for that there's more to come and more deep dive I just didn't want this to get too long it's some good stuff so be sure to stay tuned for that second part to this series if you like this be sure to like and comment down below if this is helpful for you and I would love for you to consider subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss anything with future uploads. I will try to keep them a little bit shorter in the future. Thank you for listening and I hope to see you in the next video.